at everybody at home uh, is, is a pretty tremendous burden to bear. That being said, just the, the pure vote politics of this, do you believe right now, as you, talk, as you speak today, that there's any chance that perhaps Joe Manchin or perhaps Kristen Sinema, senators from West Virginia and Arizona, might vote no on this bill? Well, I, I doubt it in the end. There is a chance, however, that they may join us in slimming it down some, probably nowhere near as much of a slim down as the situation argues for, but any amount we can reduce the size of this is a good thing for the, for the country, and I think there's at least a chance that one or two Democrats could join all of us and spend a little bit less. Have you spoken it's, with it's still going to be It's still going to be wildly out of proportion to what the country needs right now. Sorry to interrupt. Have you spoken with either of those senators or anybody that you think might be on the fence today? Yeah, there, there's all kinds of conversations going on. The, you know, the Democrat bill keeps changing. Well, millions of people could be eligible for thousands of dollars in newly available stimulus funds. Right now, many to low, low to middle income households, everybody, can apply to receive this relief. And guys, one-time direct payments worth up to $300 will begin to go out this week. And now several states are already sending out, already planning to send their tax rebates to the residents to help offset some of the impacts that people are facing. We all know that people need this money and it's good to see people are doing this. People are getting help they need. One state will start sending out tax rebate money this month and that state is Hawaii. Hawaiian residents could receive one-time direct checks up to 300 bucks as part of the state's constitutional refund that's given to each resident who files an income tax return for the previous fiscal year and the first round of distributions is set to be received on or before september 12. and with two additional distribution dates scheduled for september 9 and 13 according to the governor's office those who have not filed tax returns owed money to the government or filed the taxes after july 31st will receive their checks 10 weeks after the Department of Taxation receives documents. The governor said in a statement, it's my hope that the $300 million in tax refunds begin to, begins to go distributed so far, bring some relief to the hardworking people in the state of Hawaii who were hit hard by the crisis. According to the governor, the amount each person will receive as part of a refund is determined by the person's filing status, adjusted gross income, and the number of claimed exemptions. Single filers earning an annual income of under 100 grand will receive one-time checks of 300, with single tax pars with a higher gross of income receiving $100. Married couples who file joint returns are also set to receive $300 as part of the one-time payments. In addition to the stimulus checks, Hawaiians can look forward to the state's minimum wage, being raised for the first time since 2018. The bill approved by Governor Iggy raises the minimum wage of $10.10 per hour to $12 an hour starting October 1st. Also some good news for you guys that live in Indiana. They can expect to see another $200 in your bank account after the Indiana lawmakers approved a second set of payments during the special session. This cash comes from the state surplus. Governor Holcomb pitched the idea of a $225 check to help Indiana residents struggling with high gas prices and inflation in the Indiana House bill and Senate took approaches to different inflation relief checks. The House plan mirrored the governor's proposal and included payments of $225 to residents, while the Senate plan, on the other hand, includes a proposal to eliminate the utility sales tax for six months and cap the gas tax at $0.30 cents for a year. Senator, Senator Tim Lanane attempted to amend the state's original inflation relief measure to provide $400 payments to individual taxpayers making under forty dollars a year or $100 payments to married couples filing jointly, but under the legislation that passed, residents who didn't file a tax return no longer have to file an affidavit. To patronize these places of businesses are not in a safe environment. We have to take all that into consideration to the best we can. I remind you this, it's for a short period of time. A short period. We're not changing the tour laws forever. We're just trying to get through an emergency period of time. All right. Some senators are saying, look, liability is an issue. Aid to cities and states is an issue. Let's forget about both of those in this bill and just stick aid specifically to unemployed workers and aid to small businesses on the bill that you've got to pass to keep the government running to avoid a shutdown. Sure. Forget about that other stuff for now. What do you think about that? Oh, Chris, that's the easy way. That's the easy way out. We can forget about the tough things. That's what we've been doing for 10 years or more. No one wants to take a tough vote. They're all afraid it's going to hurt in the election. We're here to take tough votes. We're here to help a country that's having a tremendous hardship going on right now. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. So with that being said, that's the easy way. We can drop off both uh, 
reliability and drop off aids to states. But states and municipalities especially, they're on the front line. You want your services to go, essential services, first responders, firemen, policemen. You want all those to be in jeopardy of the services that we depend on and need. Let it fall apart and think we can pick it back up. You want the airlines to collapse. You want all these things to go by the wayside. We don't. We're going to make the tough tough selection. Now, if the rest of the caucus won't go along with it, they'll decide what they can throw out if the leaders can't come together. But we work as a bipartisan group, and we've grown over the month. We've got a good product that's been vetted in so many different ways. And only thing I can tell you, we've done what this place is supposed to do. We've worked together. We didn't work apart and condemn each other and point fingers at them. We've got a good product, and we want the American people to know that in America, we can do it in a bipartisan way. We can do it, and we want to do it. Senator Manchin, you've done a very good job of selling your plan. You have not done a good job of convincing me, though, it's going to get passed by Congress in the next week. Well, there's no guarantee. There's, there's, there's 535 people that's in, that have to vote. 535. I can't guarantee they're all going to vote for it and pass it. But I can tell you one thing. What's the alternative? What are you going to do? We've given one month. Day and night, our, our, uh, our staffs have worked around the clock. We've done everything we can to put an all-inclusive product together. Pick whatever part you like, whatever part you don't like. Put it all together or take it as a whole. We're going to give it to you the way we think the American people need it. In an emergency situation, we need this legislation. Senator Manchin, I want to switch to just one other subject. We've got a little, uh, we've got a short, less than two minutes left. Do any of Joe Biden's nominees, members of this team, give you heartburn? Uh, for instance, uh, you back when Barack Obama appointed Dr. Vivek Murthy as Surgeon General, you opposed that. Uh, he's now being renamed by uh, Joe Biden. Dr. Murthy for Surgeon General. Uh, you've got Javier Becerra for HHS. Is there anybody that he has named so far that you think, I'm not sure I can vote to confirm them? <laughs> well, let me be very clear. I've been very differential with President Trump, President Obama's before, and I'll be very differential with President Biden. I think a president will put their team together, unless that person has done something. ...and heat pump <clears throat> and more efficient windows and doors for their homes. Estimated savings, $500 per year on average. And we can do these things by making sure that no one earning less than $400,000 a year will pay a single penny more in federal taxes. All we're asking is that the wealthiest Americans and the largest corporations begin to pay their fair share, at least part of their fair share. You've heard me say it before. I'm a capitalist. I believe you should be able to make much money as you legally. We have a ton of big news about the fourth stimulus check, social security benefits, SSI, and SSDI payments. Continue watching this video to never miss out on this. It has been confirmed that there are still billions of dollars in stimulus money available by Americans this year. Lawmakers in Congress are urging that all other people, that everybody, apply to receive additional crisis aid from these relief payments. Anywhere between $500 and $1,500 will hit most residents of New Mexico's bank accounts over the next five months. The free money from the state government comes after New Mexico lawmakers pass two separate economic aid packages this year amid record oil revenues and rising cost of living, including high gas prices. The Special Sessions House Bill 2 lays out either $500 or $100 payments, $1,000 payments for New Mexico residents that will be split into two parts. How much you will get, though, depends on your tax filing status. And heads of households, surviving spouses, married individuals filing joint returns will receive a total of about $1,000. Individual filers and married individuals filing taxes separately will get a total of $500. Again, folks, those payments will be split into two parts. The first payment is supposed to come as soon as possible. The legislation formally outlines its delivery as no later than June 30th, 2022. Folks, joint filers will receive $500 for the first payment, single filers will receive $250 for the first payment, and the second payment of the two-part rebate will come sometime in the month of August. As with the first payment, how much you get depends on filing status. Joint filers will get $500 and individual filers will get $250. State lawmakers decide to include any income limits in House Bill 2, meaning the state will provide cash payouts to people regardless of how much money they make. If you don't make enough money to file taxes, you can still get some cash from the state. House Bill 2 provides a so-called relief payment to fill in the gaps. There is also an application process and a limited amount of cash that the government will send out. Relief payments for non-tax filers are on a first-come, first-served basis, and they will only last until a $20 million fund is exhausted. 
applicants will be required to give a social security number or individual identification number to the state for proof of identification. The relief payment folks will be the same size as a two-part rebate. $1,000 will go to households of married couples or single individuals with one or more dependents. For households of single individuals without dependents, the payment is $500. To get a relief payment, if you meet the requirements, you have to fill out an application. And the department is planning on announcing the application process within the next few weeks. Back to fundamentals, which is, you know, great companies, but... We can, but just pay your fair share. There's no reason why a billionaire should be paying a lower tax rate than a teacher or a firefighter. That's in sharp contrast to what today's Republican Party is offering. And if, I, if, if they hadn't put this in print, you'd think I was making it up. Senator Rick Scott of Florida, United States Senator, who's leading the Republican National Senatorial Campaign Committee, released what he calls the ultra-MAGA agenda. It's a MAGA agenda, all right. Let me tell you about this ultra-MAGA agenda. It's extreme, as most MAGA things are. It will actually raise taxes on 75 million American families, over 95 percent of whom make less than $100,000 a year. Among the hardest hit, working families, kids with folks. Imagine you're a family of four and you don't pay, you don't make enough money to have federal taxes. You're not because you don't, you don't make enough money to pay them. You pay all your taxes, but you just don't make enough. And under this new plan, this tax plan, the ultra mag agenda, while big corporations and billionaires are going to pay nothing more, the working class folk are going to pay a hell of a lot more. And it goes further than that. This extreme Republican agenda calls for Congress. Now, this is, I'm not making this up either. You ought to really think about this.